darkness of grief, we journey through phases of emotions. We are human after all, and this human world can often become a dark, dark place. We may ask ourselves, why is this happening to me? And we may even bargain with God to be rescued from the struggles of our lives. And when it looks like relief is nowhere in sight, we can grow angry and bitter. Life is often like the dark of night, my friends, a scary and uncertain place. But one night, 2,000 years ago, a world in grief found hope and peace. We navigate through the dark corners of our lives, knowing that there is light ahead. In times of grief and life's many challenges, we may find ourselves trapped and even depressed. But the light of hope and peace comes to us, to find us, to be in relationship with us. This light came to humanity to answer our cries for rescue. And a grieving world found joy. Yes, the light that shines in the darkness of the world is Jesus. Even when we struggle, my friends, the light dispels the gloom of night. In times of grief, we can find acceptance of our human condition, knowing that this is just temporary because of what God has done for us in Christ. And our grieving gives way to love. in darkness has seen a great light those who live in a land of deep darkness and the darkness has not overcome it those who dwell in the land of deep darkness on them light has shined we have beheld Christ's glory glory as of the only son from the father to us a child is born to us a son is given and the word was life and the life was the light to all people. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, you made the holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 96. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nation, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nation, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. second reading for today, the appearance of God's grace in Jesus Christ brings salvation to all humanity. Consequently, in the present, we live wisely and justly, while also anticipating the hope of our Savior's final appearance. The second reading comes from Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly possessions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all inquiry and purify for himself a people of his own 
who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes from the second chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth a peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed, amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. We are missing something in our manger. Jesus, the one who came to us, God in the flesh, you know, in the darkness of our times, we can forget the light that comes through Christ. Mary and Joseph had made the long arduous trek to Bethlehem. Joseph needed to be registered along with his family. He needed to be counted. The darkness of the world is filled with greed and worldly powers, my friends. The darkness of the world would want Joseph counted and his family for taxation purposes, some of it necessary to take care of the community, but so much of it went into Caesar's pocket and to others who were in charge. There's darkness all around us, my friends, and I'm sure it's easy to focus on it when the world focuses on what is wrong with itself. We hear it on the news, we see it in our neighborhoods, in our communities. We have it in our own homes. How do you define darkness, my friends? Through loss and tragedies, through oppression, through the isolation we've had these past two years. For the world, the counting needed to be happening so that others could prosper. Joseph and Mary would trek 90 miles to get to his home town in order to satisfy the powers of the world. All needed to be counted. But within Mary was God, and God would want all people counted too, all people counted for God's mercy and love. Two different powers were at play, one of darkness, the other of light. And here, the light takes us to the shepherd fields. The shepherds who are watching the flock by night, they are stunned 
to hear and receive this good news. Mary, in the quiet of night with Joseph nearby, delivers the Christ child. She labors hard. She wraps Jesus in swaddling cloths used by shepherds themselves. And the funny thing about these shepherds, not only were they seemingly ordinary out in the fields, not where you'd find a king, not someone, someone would deem as important, but they did have a special purpose. You see, these shepherds were not just ordinary shepherds. Here in Bethlehem, these fields spanned so much in order to provide flocks for all of Jerusalem and the outer lying counties. And within it, a watchtower over the flock resided, which spans all the way back to Jacob himself, marks the spot where Rachel gave birth to Benjamin and then died giving birth. Here, these, these particular shepherds were priestly shepherds. They not only were to watch over the flock, but they were to certify each and every lamb, especially the male ones, making sure they were right for sacrifice. And how would we, they, they do this? Why, they would take these particular lambs and they'd wrap them in swaddling cloths, put them in a feeding trough or a manger, if you will, and then inspect their body for blemishes. And the unblemished ones were sent to Jerusalem to be sold to people who were traveling to Jerusalem to make animal ritual sacrifices to God. So these particular shepherds, though seemingly ordinary, had a special job and purpose. They had a duty to look after these lambs, these lambs who would eventually go to their death in a sacrifice to God. You see, my friends, in the darkness and quiet of night, the light is beginning to grow and shine. For the shepherds, it bursts on the scene. God has turned the world upside down, visits these shepherds who would appreciate the history of God's people. They were the ones looking after the lambs, and they are told that basically the Messiah has arrived, and they're told where to find Jesus. And they will recognize a manger, and in it, swaddled just like a lamb, is Jesus. And then the shepherds arrive to pay homage to this baby. They tell Mary and Joseph their story. And I bet they were close by all along. As Mary pondered, did she think about Jesus and make the correlation of the swaddling cloths around Jesus and how those same cloths were used with the lambs that were inspected for sacrifice. Would she know the sorrow that lies ahead? Do we, my friends? You see, God is in charge of history. God is in charge of the present and the future. We are just called to trust and believe. Taking the story, hearing it anew, this birth, this birth of a new way of being in relationship with God, by God coming to us in the form of Jesus, and then thinking that maybe the darkness doesn't have all the power after all. Maybe the light shines through that darkness, the darkness of isolation, loneliness, hurt, pain, death itself. This is a triumphant moment. And as Mary ponders all of this, she sees light and love. You see, my friends, the love that God had for us by forming this special relationship in Jesus with each and every one of us, it changes everything. It changes your future. It changes mine. But it also changes our present and how we look at our world, how we act in it, how we function. 
do we go out with Mary's faith, with gratitude, knowing that God has done a good thing for us? Do we trust that? May the joy and light that shines this Christmas season not only shine through the worldly artificial lights, but from within you and all around you, reminding you that the Messiah has come. The Messiah has saved the world. The Messiah is still here with us in spirit. And that does change everything. May that make your burdens light, my friends. May you see more light moments than dark moments. And may you never forget that this was all done out of love for all humanity, including you. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. I want to take some time to talk about this gift of Jesus. This gift of Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And in turn, we give in honor of Christ to the world. If you're someone who has donated to this ministry to help it keep moving and, and spread the word of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for your support. Here's my heart, take it, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. We celebrate tonight because Jesus is our gift. And God also makes Jesus present to us today when we take in his body and blood, remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross and what Jesus continues to do for us now. And so my friends, know this. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is now my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is now a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So my friends, you take the bread, and know this, the body of Christ is given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. peace my friends rejoice in Christ our Savior and you can begin to do so by joining me in saying thanks be to God